Hello everyone, I'm Mira Nisim, and this is Montessori Essentials. Today our Montessori Talks is with Jacob Shekrell. Hello Jacob. Hi Mira, thank you. Hi to all of the listeners. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We're going to talk today about something a bit different. We're going to talk about how our minds work and how we can become better people, better parents, how we can help our children through hypnosis. Uh, Jacob has a great online following on Facebook, Jacob's Ladder to Success. You can find him, Jacob Shakrell, on Facebook and also on Instagram, Jacob to Success. He's been doing a really great 60 second video challenge for the past two months and he does it almost every day. And it's been really interesting to learn more about his process and how he helps people and how the brain works. So, would you like to tell us a little about your projects? Yes, I'm working now on a weight loss project, which is not a diet. It's working through the mind. It's working through the core issues, how we can solve things, why it happened, and how we can solve it. Mm -hmm. And by coincidence, because there is no, I don't believe in coincidence, and I was approached by women who were abused, have... Uh, different type of abuse after all with are three types of abuse physical mental and sexual mm -hmm. and and i found the the way to deal with it and to help them to solve issues very fast very fast wonderful and so tell me can you explain what exactly hypnosis is like is it something we do to ourselves is it only something someone can do to us how, how does it work Okay, first of all, we, we can do it to ourselves and somebody is usually doing it to us. It's much easier. Mm -hmm. But before I explain, explain ex hypnosis, I want to explain how the mind works because to understand how the hypnosis works, we need to understand a bit of the mind. Okay? So we have the, the, the conscious and the subconscious mind. Now, most people are confused because they think that we have, we say we have the conscious mind, the subconscious, it's somewhere in the brain and it's not. The okay. conscience and the subconscious are spiritual, are thought, it's energy. So we do, it's not connected to the brain. Yes, it's connected with the energy that it goes through it, mm -hmm. but it's not a physical. There is no any uh, surgeon, mind, brain surgeon, that ever cut the subconscious mind. Interesting. There is no. There is no. Okay? So... So it's energy and, and it's part of us. I'm saying that this is our way to connect to God, to the universe, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. each one in his beliefs, whatever beliefs they have. Now, the conscious mind is the logic part, okay? This is where we think. It's connected with the, usually I have some uh, diagram which I'm showing it. I learned it from my teacher, Bob Proctor. Mm -hmm. And... And it shows that the uh, head, which is the conscience and the subconscious, like the head of a person, and it has five hair, five tiny hair like antennas, which are the senses, the five senses. Mm -hmm. And these are the senses, which are physical part in the brain, which are connecting us to the, to the conscience, the, the reality in our life that we get by the five senses to the conscious mind. Interesting. And this is where we decide. This is the, as I said, this is the logic. Oh. So the conscious mind is where we decide. We take the decision. It's, and it very, goes very simple. Yes, no. I want it. I don't want it. I like it. I don't like it. Now, all these decisions, whatever we decide in the logic part, goes to the, the, the subconscious mind, which is the emotional part. Okay? In the subconscious mind, we have two filters. One is the paradigms, which contains the beliefs, not talking about religion, beliefs, perceptions, attitude, and habits. Mm -hmm. And the other filter is the inner self in me, which is basically how I see myself according to the world. Okay. The paradigm is how we judge the world according to our values that we have inside. So whatever goes from the conscious mind goes into the subconscious mind, it goes through to the filters, Create an energy, the decision, what we want to decide. If I have an idea in the conscious mind, which let's say I want to do something to earn a million dollars. I want to have, start a business. 
and it goes through the filter of the paradigms and in the paradigms my belief is saying that money is bad so i won't do anything it won't pass that value okay mm -hmm. and i won't do anything in my life to achieve that million dollar business whatever it is okay, okay. so now that we understand how it works we take the hypnosis and and we understand that the results that we have in our life are basically coming from what we have, the values that we have in the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. okay, so if I want to see what is my value, what are my values in the subconscious mind, I just need to see the reality, the results which I have in my life, and I can guess. I can guess about people, I can guess about myself. If I want to have more in my life, I know that I need to create a change in the subconscious mind, in those values inside, in my, the way I see myself, the way I believe in myself, my self-confidence. I think I need to change my subconscious daily to suit what I need to do that day. <laughs> Welcome to the club. We all need it. All humanity <laughs> needs to do it. Exactly. <laughs> so it's here. Yeah. So the hypnosis, now we, now we understand how it works, so we need to do a daily change. Let's take the hypnosis. In the normal way, we say, okay, I want to make something in my conscious mind, and then I need to apply it to the subconscious mind and repeat and repeat. But mm -hmm. it's not working because it says always, no, you can't do it. No, it's not the right time. No, you don't have the money. No, yeah. you don't have the, enough education. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have the skills, whatever it is. So we're always right. finding the excuses why not to. Right. Okay? Or people don't know what hypnosis involves or they think it's like uh you know the acts people put on i'm gonna hypnotize you and then you're gonna sound like a chicken or fall asleep when i clap my hands but it's not it doesn't really happen like that with a someone that's doing it clinically like yourself it, it, no it's it's, it's, it's not different. it's not at all mm -hmm. and and that's why i don't like when i'm doing hypnosis i don't like to work with all the stereotypes with the finger or the pendulum or any other things Right. which are the typical hypnotic way, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I know that when I, if I do it, I might create some fear in people that have some fears blocked in their mind, Right. okay? Now, what I do in hypnosis regarding the mind is like I'm saying to the conscious mind, you know what, you're very nice, you're very kind, stay here, relax, don't interfere. Let me talk directly with the subconscious mind. I'm right. talking with the subconscious mind. I'm creating, I'm giving suggestions that will create some better results, better value. Building the self-confidence, clearing some negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative energy from the mind inside. And when I'm working directly with the subconscious mind, it's easy to do it. Right. Because there is no any interference. And then right. after I'm, planting those suggestions i'm saying to the conscious mind hey hi how are you come back right and that's right. it it's and it's bang it goes like this and people start changing things from inside without knowing what happened really because they there's they're expecting some struggle and there is no any struggle no struggle we i've, I've had to. several sessions with you and was really impressed with the things that we worked on working very quickly as well. It was like after the first session with you, things that I had been holding on to for years were just, was gone. That was it. Yeah. And it felt yeah. great. Um, so what age can you start helping children with hypnosis? My daughter, she is now almost 10 years in a couple of months. And, but I started with her about the last year. Well, let's say in the last year because before that she was refused. And I understand that because her mother refused. So she saw her mother refusing, so she refused as well. Right. And, and it's very typical. Look, I came from ignorant. I was ignorant regarding hypnosis and I was afraid of it as well. So I can understand people who have fears, who have phobias, who have traumas, whatever they have but the, the fear that they create from hypnosis. Because mm -hmm. there is no way that you won't wake up because you're not going to sleep anyway. Yeah. Because right. the only thing that we do is closing their eyes. So basically I'm closing just one sense from five senses. Mm -hmm. The rest are there. 
Yeah. Okay. And I'm saying, and the person, when he wakes up from hypnosis, remembers everything, all the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So How about than, like my five-year-old who doesn't have any opinion of hypnosis? I don't think he's seen it other than in the Incredibles 2 movie that he just watched some kind of thing. Would, would you be able to do a session with him or would you do it differently with a child? I, I would do it differently. I would do it differently. And I think that's the, the mothers among us are easy to do it, very easy. And, and, and I did it with my daughter. I started, that's the way when my daughter refused to get hypnosis, she didn't know that I used to treat her while she was asleep. There's a good idea. Okay. So at like at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., when she was asleep and I was like after still working my computer doing my things, mm -hmm. I used to go to her. She was asleep. I used to tap her head, like bring creating almost awareness, almost awake. I don't want to wake her. Mm -hmm. I just want to bring her a bit to have to, to connect the senses. So I was tapping her head. Mm -hmm. And if I used to see that she start moving, like getting awake, I stop doing it and I move the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. I used to have my phone with the light in the side. So I have something to have some control to see what I'm doing at least. Mm -hmm. And not in her. And while tapping her head, I used to talk with her. I used to create an images. I used to create a positive images how she's going to be, how she's going to see herself, how she's going to feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's slow. It's, more, it's slower than normal hypnosis. Okay? But it's working as well. So when, when a mother, she's hugging a child, okay, and she's holding him tight, even awake, even aware, okay, during the day, and she's just see, telling him in his ear, like whispering in his ear, you're great. You're going to do something. I'm, I'm talking to a child to a boy, but it can be as well to a girl. Mm -hmm. You're great. You're doing good. You're a perfect child. You're, I love you. I, whatever. Mm -hmm. Each one can be creative and just to mention that, to say that in it. Years, and that goes deep inside. Yeah, definitely. Just sinking in. Definitely. Also, there's the opposite. Uh, Ma Maria Montessori talked a lot about the absorbent mind, which is especially active in children within the first six or seven years of their life where they're just taking in everything from their environment, things people say, ways people act, what they see around them. And uh, it, it allows them to adapt to their time and their place and their culture. So she talks about how influenced children are, but they don't quite, she says they don't really have a filter yet of whether something's good or bad. So if you're constantly telling them you love them or they're smart or they're great, they're taking that in. Eventually they'll take that in as part of their personality. But we also, if you're saying that this goes in so easily with a mother and her child, we also have to be very careful as adults to not say the opposite. And I think that's one reason why people are getting so interested in, in different education systems now and more kind of alternative education like Montessori, Waldorf, et cetera, where people speak to the children intentionally. Is that mm -hmm. something that you would agree with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the brain, the mind, is, not the brain, the mind, sorry. The mind is working like a copy-paste. It's very simple. It seems something it's copying paste in the in the mind seeing something copying in the mind okay it's like if if we if we're talking about a child okay a baby a child that was born and and the mind the conscious mind doesn't exist because we decide now as adults we can decide i want it i don't want it i like it i don't like it okay the child doesn't have it so it's yeah. like the subconscious mind is open wide open to absorb everything that the parents will bring inside. So if the child experiences love, affections, support, saying positive things, music, so it will be it will absorb in, and that's what is going to be in his life. That's what is going to happen. But the same child that absorbs 
bad and in, bad influence, negative words and everything. Why? Because it's just doing copy paste. Right. The conscious, the subconscious mind believes everything. Definitely. Which is another reason why it's very important if we do make mistakes of reactions that were overblown or saying something we didn't mean that we talk about it later and say, oh, that really, that wasn't, that wasn't something I meant to say. I'm sorry for saying it or this isn't the correct way to speak because they do take it in so, so easily. Um, so I've done some sessions with you, as I said earlier, and part of my interest in doing it is the Montessori preparation of the adult. She talks about in order to be the adult that is capable of respecting the child, following the child, going at a child's pace as an adult uh, teacher or a parent, that we have to work on ourselves. And so I did some sessions with you to work on myself to clear the things that we're talking about from my own childhood where I took something in that's not serving me and it's not helping me as a parent. Uh, how, how do you use hypnosis to, to help people to be their best selves or to be better parents? Okay. Uh, as you just mentioned, you had some stories from your childhood that you took in your life, even though you don't really need. But that's what your mind did, and it took it, and it's become, it was there somewhere in the subconscious mind growing Right. taking space so i found out that the best things to do you know, i don't need i don't like to bring traumas as well we've done a plr a past life regression mm -hmm. and and you notice that i don't really like to take a person to experience again the pain right okay when we reach to the point of pains basically i'm moving it like a screen you can see it you can visualize it Mm -hmm. But you don't need to experience the pain. You don't need to relieve it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, also that's that's my my way of seeing basically almost everything, almost any aspect in in uh, with hypnosis. A woman that was raped, I don't need to take her to the moment of she when she was raped to feel again all the terror, all the fear, all the pain. She right. doesn't need it. She already been there. There is a re it's recorded in a mind. Okay? Yeah. Now I want to, to do something else. I want to take that story, that recording, and to change her attitude towards it. Not to let it affect anymore her life by this recorded in the mind. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just to change the way she treats it. Okay? Right. So yes, first we need to clear some energy, negative energy. So I'm, I call it clearing negative energy. It's not well. It's everything is energy. But so I'm doing the clearing, and it's it's very visual. It's become very visual, and people are coming after that. A woman that what she was raped at the age of fifteen, and it went. I take a few minutes to just tell the story, mm -hmm. and she was at the age of fifteen when she was raped. Now she's in her forties. And when we met, we, we, she, we were introduced. She was told that I'm a hypnotist. And said, oh, I need you, but you won't be able to help me. I said, fine, okay, no need. You won't mm -hmm. be able because I'm controlling everything. I said, excellent. I'm not, it's not a competition. We're not taking mm -hmm. hands. You know, it's, it's not a competition here. I said, fine. You know, if, but when you decide that you want to be, get help, you'll need to open yourself and to right. let go of the control. After the dinner, it was a dinner evening. After the dinner, she came to me next to me and with her friend that knows me. And we start talking. And I guessed, and I, I had the, my intuition was quite strong, and I knew that she was abused. I didn't know what exactly, but I guess she was abused. And I gave her an example of a story of another woman that she was abused. And that was like just pouring water in the desert. Because mm. then she was like, poof, okay, yes, that's exactly what I had. That's exactly what I need. That, that's exactly where I want to be. Mm. Now, I decided because she was as well so controlling and so 
So I just told her, close your eyes, just go breathe deep. And, and without even noticing, she went in. Wow. And I did sort of hypnosis, and I just clearing, I cleaned it a bit, the energy. I, I just changed her attitude towards the event, towards her memories. Yeah. And I did a short one. I didn't want, I did even, it was not planned to be, it was just on the spot because I felt that I need to help that woman by just opening her mind. And, and I spoke with her two days later. I won't ask her that I want to talk with her two days later. And she, she came, she was very calm. She said, I'm calm. And two days later when we spoke, she said, I never been I never was so calm in my life. Wow. In the last two days since you did it. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, we can change everything. It's everything It's here. Right. Everything is in our mind. We can be better or worse. Oh it's about deci decision and helping us to take blocks out from thinking that we can be different yeah. right so tell me if let's say if someone came to you after a recent trauma let's say a child had an, a traumatic accident rather than waiting until we become adults and we've been living with things for a long time would you be able to help a, a child that had just gone through something would you be able to kind of go in and, and, and clear negative space or does it, do you need to take more time? It's possible to do it. It's possible to do it to everyone as soon as we start being aware to ourselves, to our existing, mm -hmm. to who we are, we can do it. We just need to give the right uh, relaxed instruction. To do to the kids, it, it's a very easy process because because we just need to let them play. Let them go in their mind, playing in their mind. Mm -hmm. okay? My daughter loves Lego. So I, if I want to do it right with her, I need to build something with Lego in her mind, in her imagination. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So yes, we can, do, we can change the attitude. We can change the perspective. The way the, 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 the perception, sorry. The, the way that we perceive things in our life right now. So if I see something as hard and harsh, it will be hard and harsh, just as I, the way I see it. But if I see something as a positive and everything is okay, it will be like that. So it's not talking about positive words. It's not like, you know, you know this modern uh, culture of being positive, saying everything positive. Yeah, it's not for the sake of being positive or to look to be seen positive. It's not. It's right. because if I'm convincing my mind that everything is okay, I'm having now hard experience. I'm going to, uh, okay, you know, just, I decided to go on a track. I'm not, it's not, in, I'm just giving an example. I decided to go on a track to the Himalaya. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard. We know that. It's going to be for a while. It's going to be hard. Now, if yeah. I'm going to say it's going to be hard, 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 I won't finish that. Right. But if I'm going to say, wow, it's hard, but I enjoy it. It's hard, but I can feel my muscles. It's hard. I don't know what even to say there. Like, I've never been there. But, right. but it's hard. It's fun. Mm -hmm. So if I can convince myself that even though it's hard, it's fun, and I enjoy it, I can do whatever it takes. Right. Your example makes me think of birthing, actually. Uh, it's something that most of us have conditioned from movie and media and stories of our families of how hard birth is and birth is painful and birth is difficult and you need this and you need that and now that med medicine has gotten into it we've got epidurals and will you get this we'll use that and i used hypnobirthing with uh, the birth of my son Raphael, and i it was actually it was the third child that i had had and it was spectacular it really i listened to affirmations every day for a couple months I, I listened to a guided meditation and don't remember a lot of it because I was very relaxed. And, uh, but yet it, it really helped me. It, it helped my, relax my mind. I knew that it was going to be difficult, but I also knew I could handle it. I knew my body knew what it was doing. And I reprogrammed myself 
through hypnosis and it, it really helped me a lot. So it's another, another way actually becoming parents that we can use hypnosis to, to help kind of retrain our thought process to difficult things, making them easier. Um, actually been curious about uh, hypnosis was, for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> your example, absolutely. It's, I think it's touching more, the, more people than to, to the story thinking about climbing the Himalaya, but that's true. But, <laughs> but, you know, what I'm saying that I'm trying, the, the idea which I'm trying to pass is to, to people that watch it, that they can help their own kids. Just need to be aware. Just need right. to choose the right words. Right. That's okay. great. So they, they can help their own kids. You don't need to go to hypnotherapists all the time. Not on every issue. Mm -hmm. Probably you won't go with, with a child. Mm -hmm. But... By the words that we build in, if you say to, to a child, you're going to be, you're so bad, you're going to be a criminal, you're going to end your life like whatever. Right. It's going to happen. Yeah. It will happen. So we can control it. We can control what we want to achieve from our kids, to help right. them. Right. And yes, of course, even I'm doing the mistakes sometimes. I'm... I'm losing it, and when my daughter, she's doing something, and I can wow. burst and, and say the wrong words, mm -hmm. then I say, I'm sorry, you're right, I was wrong. Right. It can happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it it's not nice, it's not perfect, it's not good. Life is not our topic. Right. We wish it would be, but it's not. So mm -hmm. we need to live and to find the right ways, but let's at least have more positive things, words that we use to our kids than the negative. Right. Uh, do you think you might ever make a course in the future on how to help parents with their children or to build their self-esteem, to build their confidence, to help them with success in school using suggestions or hypnosis? I believe that I'll do it, but I want now to focus and finish, to finish what I'm right now building. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I'll do it in the future. And that the, would be great. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. In, in the meantime, people can contact and, and ask and see and if there's something that we can do. I'm helping a friend who is stuttering. Her daughter is stuttering, and I'm working now. Well, I, I'm talking to work now with a young woman, she's in her 20s, but she's stuttering from, her parents told her that she started stuttering at the age of four or five from a dog. She was afraid of dog. But when I asked if she's afraid, when I asked her if she's afraid of dogs, she said, no, actually, I love dogs. So I don't think it's the right reason. It's not what she believes. Yeah. And we need to work on that. But it can be change it can be changed everything everything in our life is affected by stress everything yeah, right okay and and one of the things which i'm teaching and i think i did it as well with you it, it's the three f mm -hmm. the three fingers so basically i'm giving that to my clients as a present and and to teach them how to control the stress so when you feel that you're in a stressful situation Successful environment, whatever. Just need to close your three fingers, put it in your pocket. No, if you, if you, if a person is standing with the boss and the boss is shouting at him and he start getting stressed, he can push his hand into his pocket and close the three fingers. Right. And he, he comes down. He controls. He's not responding. He controls the situation. Right. So it, it's quite interesting. Yeah. It's Very interesting. The mind, the beauty of the mind. The mind is the powerful. And it's helpful when there's other people that can help you with your powerful mind. <laughs> um, so absolutely, it's fascinating. Oh, definitely. It's a I, I, I'm happy journey. that I met yeah. you. I'm happy that we've we've done some sessions together, and and I'm hoping that people find this interesting and and get more curious, ask more questions, come to us and and talk about our experiences with uh, with hypnosis and. The other thing is it's, it's really, it's also, it's anything. It's parenting, it's childhood, it's traumas, it's diet, it's everything's controlled by your mind. So if you can really... Spiritual. Exactly. If you can find ways for someone to help you like yourself or to help yourself to clear 
negative issues out, imagine how much better human beings we could be. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here and tell people that please, if you have been interested in what we've been saying, please leave us a comment. You can follow both of us on Instagram. Uh, Jacob is Jacob to success on Instagram and Jacob's ladders to success on Facebook. Ask questions, yep. get interested. You can ask for sessions. And if you want to learn more about Montessori, you can follow Montessori Essentials. We're talking to experts in different areas, uh, talking about how to be to better parents, how to help children have great childhoods in all different facets. Uh, so I think this is a really interesting way to start talking about helping us to be better parents and helping our children through childhood by talking about how the mind works. Thank you so much for joining us, Jacob. Thank you very much, Mira. Thank you.